so many people get discouraged, um, especially when you're a child. I, I remember my grade uh, three teacher telling me to put this artwork away that I was, I was working on. It was a duck, I think. And she said, put the art away. You'll never make a living with that and take out your math scribbler or whatever it was. And I remember that all, all throughout my life is, is how art is somewhat not valued to what it should be. Grew up in Yarmouth on 5th Street. At the top uh, uh, was the jailhouse, and every time we were bad as boys, there was three of us, in, three boys in our family and two girls. Uh, my mother always used to say, if you're bad, you're going to jail. So, center town boy, um, spent a lot of time on the wharves in, in, um, in Yarmouth. When I say spent a lot of time on the wharves, it was wharves wide open. You could walk all over the place, talk to fishermen, help them with their lines or whatever like that, and, and now everything's kind of chain fenced off and, and you know no excess ability or whatever like that, but I actually grew up on, on the waterfront in Yarmouth, basically fishing off the wharf, helping people with min nets and things like that. So yeah, I had an appreciation of, of uh, boats uh, as a kid, really. Uh, I've always been interested in art. Uh, when I was really young, um, say age of four or five, I used to draw a lot. Um, ma mainly I, I really liked drawing, for some reason, knights in armor. I, I liked how the, the shapes were and, and um, then it progressed to trains. I was really drawing trains for a while, but I, I always enjoyed making things uh, with my hands. Uh, I have numerous ideas in my head and uh, to make them into a three-dimensional form is, is um, what I've enjoyed all my life. To make a, a painting out of an idea or, um, or a ship in a bottle uh, or uh, making a print. Um, it's all that same process. It's how I live. I, I don't think I could actually live properly if I didn't do that whole process. You know, you, you can produce a, a thought in your head. You know, it, it's influenced by other ideas, of course, that you've seen every day. Uh, a bird flying, a cloud going by, or, or you know, an ad on a TV or something like that. Um, but to to personalize that and make it into a three-dimensional uh, form that you can actually feel with your hands, look at with your eyes, um, it's really something that uh, it's always interests me as, as long as I can remember. Printmaking isn't what you call a, a real common thing, although it's been around for ages, and that's how we get the first books, uh, the first pictures, uh, you know, mass produced. At, they use a printing process. Um, the print shop here at the Ark is quite unique in, in that it still uses a lot of the old traditional plates um, with acid etching, and so that you can come up with a matrix that you can print a hundred copies off or, or whatever. A lot of other print shops are much more, um, I hate to use the word contemporary, but uh, a lot more print shops are um, using more modern methods, mono prints, a lot of different colors, different inks, a different process altogether than the old fashioned plate with acid and aquatint. It seems to be an older traditional print form, but not widely practiced anymore, except for here at the, the print shop, right. which is kind of unique in itself. How many print shops are there throughout the center of the province? Or? Uh, there's uh, one in um, uh, Mahone Bay, there's uh, one in Annapolis, um, and several in, in uh, Halifax. Uh, of course, uh, the, the art college there has a, a magnificent um, printmaking courses there, and uh, I also wanted to take that. I never was able to do that. But um, and then there's all individual printmakers that just print on their own, and it's quite a um, an active uh, art form, but still not really uh, widely known of how it works or or uh, you know the, the process involved in, in, in making a print. When you're very young, like a child, a grade school or whatever like that, you're you're more of a competitive person, um, but as, as you get to be a more mature artist, I, I, I think you really uh, start to hang out with a lot of other artists. There's more of a collaboration instead of competition. 
you're really proud of a, a painting or a picture or a ship in a bottle and and you would you would show it to a few people or whatever and then more and more people would would encourage you usually family members and so you really have to think about that and think oh they're just saying it's a good picture or it's a good painting or it's a good ship in a bottle because they're your family members uh, and in other artists critiquing your work and saying nice job but you might want to look at your values or whatever very constructive really a very uh, helpful process and and I think a lot of people in, in starting off with art are very afraid of that process because um, no one wants to be criticized and, and rightly so um, but yet um, I think it's a crucial part of making art is is so you have honest feedback about what you're producing right. and um, uh, I've never shied away from it you can tell when it's sincere uh, like when Cecil would come over and critique my prints I mean, you know, I, you couldn't get a higher authority onto it, and she would tell you straight up, you know, this the aqua tent sucked, you know, or whatever, you know, or nice, you know, beautiful line and, and, and good values in, in in your print, and you really appreciated that because you looked at it and said, yeah, she's right, you know, it's it's encouraging to have people to critique your art um, in a way that um, that makes sense to you. It is an old art form. Uh, making ships and bottles uh, has been around since glass become more commercially available. Uh, people would, would start to come across bottles that would, would you could actually see through instead of uh, crockery or whatever. Um, I, I, I started sh making ships and bottles in 1984 uh, after the tall ships come to Halifax for the first time. I walked down on the, on the waterfront there and it reminded me of my childhood really with a lot of the old vessels here in Yarmouth still had mast in them, but they weren't sailed. They were they were diesel powered or, or whatever. But so much rigging and, and whatever. And I was going to produce a large scale uh, model of one of these beautiful wind ships. And um, I thought for a while that what would I do with it after I finished it? This huge model. I, I just had no concept of what would what would become of it. So I was aware of making ships and bottles through, I used to um, sail myself or be on an oar carrier in a gypsum boat. And one of the uh, crew members on, on the, the, the boat was uh, an old uh, Danish guy. He, his name was Anderson. He had big bushy eyebrows and all tattooed up. He was a tra traditional old salt sort of thing. And he used to make very crude ships and bottles. And, he would toss them overboard and um, I tried to get one off him and he, he said if I ever come across one of these ships that I've made in my life on on land I'll never come go to sea again so it was very you know uh, superstitious type of older um, sailor he used to we used to sail off Havana Cuba and he would try to catch sharks to eat and uh, so he was quite a different guy so I, I knew about the artwork and and uh, so I said well I'll try it and uh, of course my first example was not what you call pristine it was um it needed refinement and and i've been refining it since 1984 uh again very challenging artwork it, very precise measurements um there's a process and if you mess up with the process the ship doesn't collapse properly and it won't go in the mouth of a bottle so uh, each year I, I i try to produce several um, and each time I put a ship in a bottle, it tangles different. It has its own um, irregularities. It has its own problems. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it keeps pushing me and, and pushing me to be more precise and more correct on uh, deck detail or, or rigging detail or, or, or whatever. It takes a lot of patience. Uh, I find patience, you have to have patience to wash dishes. Um, when you're when you're making art and, and you're so in, immersed into it, what, whatever it is, um, time becomes irrelevant. Really, it, it, you just you, you get into the slipstream of whatever it is, and hours can go by. And whereas if you're doing something that you don't really like, minutes seem like hours. It's amazing how that does that. Really, you know, you're up at three o'clock in the morning. And you're thinking, oh, just one more detail or whatever sort of thing. So. Painting and, and drawing, I started at the same time because I knew I was going to retire and I wanted to um, 
diverse uh, other than just putting ships in bottles and, and doing some little sketches. Um, I, I enjoy each individual art form for what it is, it, it, what it brings to me. Like ships and bottles is very detail oriented. Where we're, um, painting, not so much. Uh, like I said, I always used to paint outside the lines. So if you don't like the, where the tree is, you move it. Printmaking, same thing. It, it has a, a bit of both. Uh, it's very technical in a way that you use um, metal, acids, you know, to, to, to make this uh, matrix. Uh, and then how you print it is, do you leave more ink on, less ink off? So so it's a kind of in between. So so a, a lot of the, the art forms that I, I take part in, they have, have different things to it, but would I like one over the other? No, I like aspects of each individual ones very well. The first gate is what, it, what, what medium are you gonna work in? Um, and how can I show this image in my head the best possible way? Is it through photography? Is it through painting, printmaking? I used to think I knew a lot of artists, and I, and I do, And uh, but uh, just uh, it was like the iceberg effect. I, I know the top, it sticks out of the water, but I never knew the depth and, and the, the ability of, of a lot of artists in the area are very, very uh, versatile in, in their approach to art. The depth of, of art uh, in the area and culture, uh, I think, is overlooked by a lot of people here. You have um, all kinds of, of, of uh, different art forms being produced or whatever, but not a really great, great system of, of supporting art here. And that's unfortunate. Oh, well, we'll, we'll ask an artist to uh, donate a piece because it's good for their um, portfolio. But when it comes right down to supporting art, um, Yarmouth isn't what you call very um, progressive in that, to, m to my knowledge. I mean, the, the Yarmouth Art Society has tried to push forward a, a, a program at uh, the, the mall lately um, where artists can hang their work. Um, again, small step in the right direction. The Nova Scotia Art Gallery here has a branch here. I, I think that could be more proactive in, in uh, involving a lot more local people. Um, they try, uh, I guess, but um, it, it's a hard sell here. Uh, Yarmouth people know lobster, but when it comes to art, culture, which is which could be a very big um, economic driver in the area, the art scene here could be top notch. Really, I mean, we have the depth, we have the the, the imagination, we have uh, the people involved in it, but um, there doesn't seem to be any coordination of um, of effort to to really support um, artists in the area, which is unfortunate. Well, no one really knows their future, but uh, I, I, I'm going to continue as long as I have eyesight, dexterity in my hands. Um, like I say, I have probably three lifetimes of thoughts in my head about art. Um, will I ever produce all, everything that I think about? No, but it's it's something to, to shoot for, you know, uh, to continue uh, making art in, until the very end, really, wherever that is. It may change. I, I notice uh, as I grow older, um, my hands aren't as, uh, got as much dexterity into them. With painting, you just evolve uh, with a lo looser uh, style. Uh, instead of painting along the line, it's close to the line or, or whatever. So, so yeah, I, I think as you grow older, um, your approach to art changes, and and uh, that's reasonable. I, I think as long as I can, as long as I can still hold a paintbrush, I'll continue to paint or 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 make a print or put a ship in a bottle. I'll, I'll continue to do it.